Ladies and gentlemen, some of y'all might be surprised, some of you might not be, about what these parents are accused of doing to this beautiful baby that you guys see on my screen. Jamari Mendez is the name of this beautiful baby that you guys see on my screen right here. And Jamari's parents, by the name of Ricardo Mendez, who's 27 years old, right there, and the mother, and Tanita Miller, let me see if I can get her picture up here. I think I have a solo shot of her. Let me see. Right here. Antonita Miller is 24 years old. And both of them have been charged with torture, assault of a child, and murder. So let me say this before I get to saying some inflammatory things. Because I almost, almost did, but I caught myself. But this story is going to have some details that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities as well as my personal opinions. But that is your disclaimer if you need to exit the video if you're triggered really easily. Here's the inflammatory part. That's the dad and that's the mom with her belly hanging out. Why they got this woman with her belly hanging out over her panties that's hanging out over her pants like that? Why is she built like that at 24 years old? Mother or no mother. She is 24. There's no reason for her to have a belly to stick it out that far at 24 years of age. You're going to lose that metabolism the older you get. It is going to get worse if you don't check it from the jump. But just throwing it out there. I'm getting this story from thesun.com, so thank you for the article. But this couple out of Barstow, California. How many stories have we done out of California? They were arrested by cops on Tuesday. The day before, Jamari, Jamari's aunt, Leslie Mendez, said that the pair had shown up to a family function at 7 p.m. in nearby Pomona, California with their two other children. We say that again. The mom and the dad showed up to a family function with two out of three of their children. Family function, function for family. I'm bringing two out of my three children. If you ask me, that's not even a yellow flag. That would have been an immediate red flag for me that something is wrong if I'm one of the family members. But they tried to give a story as far as like, why is one of the children missing? They tried to say that the child was with another family member or something like that. But they chillingly claimed that Jamari was with Miller's mother while the one-year-old toddler was still in the couple's car bundled up under a blanket. <sighs> Tried to say he was with the grandmother. Leslie told KABC TV they both walked inside the house like nothing happened. I want y'all to think about that for a moment. Because I think that, that should make, actually make their charges even higher. Because they clearly didn't give a crap. She added, everybody is devastated. We didn't expect our own blood to do this to his own son. Leslie, Leslie said that Ricardo allegedly eventually confessed to his family that Jamari was dead. And that his body was in the back of their car. How many stories have I posted on my channel where deranged individuals drive, drive around with dead children in the car? How many stories have I done? Can anybody give me a, a, a number? I'll probably say 10, maybe 10 stories. One of the worst ones I ever heard was out of Baltimore. We talked about that a number of different times. Would have mother rode around with uh, either a dead child or dead children. I don't remember how many it was. For like, I think it was like weeks or months or something like that. It was for a while. 
where the smell was so bad it was unmistakable death. But nonetheless, the devastated aunt said that she immediately hurried to get her nephew out of the vehicle. Everybody runs and he was covered in blankets. That's when my two older brothers helped my sister-in-law take the baby out, Leslie said. She said that the boy's parents stayed behind while she and her sister-in-law rushed the toddler to the hospital. The parents stayed behind while family members took the toddler to the hospital. Hmm. Despite desperate efforts to revive him, Jamari was tragically pronounced dead by doctors. Barstow Police Department launched an investigation into the boy's death after noting his injuries were consistent with ongoing abuse. The police said that little Jamari's body was covered. I want to make sure because you can actually see a scratch on his face right there in that picture. You can actually, matter of fact, I don't know if y'all can see that or not from that picture right there. On the right hand side, he's got bruising on the side of his face. These are things that the family might have missed. They might have missed this. Scratches, bruises are usually telltale signs of abuse especially with babies, but they said he was covered in lesions, bruising, and burn marks. Some of the injuries appear to be in different stages of the healing process. So that means this has been going on pretty much his entire life. During a search of the couple's house and car, police said that they found evidence of items used in Jamari's alleged horrific abuse, including a torch lighter. They used a torch lighter on this baby. It is understood that Jamari died at home in Barstow before the parents drove to see their family in Pomona. This is just insane. But they're due to appear in court on Wednesday and a GoFundMe campaign is set up by Leslie to raise money for Jamari's funeral. And they have raised nearly $6,000 so far. And I think I have a picture of that GoFundMe. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yes. Want to make sure that you guys get an opportunity to see the GoFundMe. They were asking for $15,000. They have raised $9,280 at the time that I pulled this up. So if you want to look that up, you're able to find it. You guys know how I feel about GoFundMe accounts. I think that we... First of all, we should all have life insurance. That's first and foremost. Every human being should have life insurance. I know unfortunate things happen and I know a lot of people resort to GoFundMe and I'm thankful that there are people who are able to give and help these people through these processes um, when it comes to these GoFundMe's whenever they have a death in the family like this. But I don't think we should rely on hoping that people will help us take care of these expenses like that. Okay. But nonetheless, they were able to collect at least that much so far. But let me give you guys the fair usage. And no, I don't think that these parents ever love these kids. They never loved any of these kids. It's a scary story. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And if you guys are watching this story, if y'all would, for Jamari, please click that thumbs up and share his story. Don't let this thing go in vain. Okay, we want to make sure and get justice. We want to make sure that he has an opportunity to have his story heard because his life mattered. Okay, here we go. Let's get it. Family of one-year-old Jamari Mendez. Let me apologize to you guys' eardrums. My bad. Hold on. don't know how we died, only that his parents are allegedly involved. Everybody's devastated. Like, 
we didn't expect to, uh, our own blood to be used to Sorry about that volume. I'm going to try to adjust it for you guys. My bad. Sorry about that. His own son. Mendez's brother, 27-year-old Ricardo Mendez, and his girlfriend, 24-year-old Antonita Miller, are accused of murdering the toddler. She says when the couple first arrived at the family's Pomona home with their two other children, they said their youngest was with Miller's mother. So they both walked inside like nothing, like nothing happened. Mendez's brother eventually told their mother Jamari had died and revealed to the family he was still in the couple's car under a blanket. Everybody runs and he was covered in blankets and that's when my sister-in-law and my other two brothers um, helped her take the baby out. She says she and her sister-in-law jumped into a car and drove to the hospital. I had to carry, I had to carry him in my arms dead. <laughs> Despite efforts to revive the boy, he was pronounced dead. Detectives say the child's body was covered in burn marks, bruises in various stages of healing, and other lesions. Abuse, they say, that led to his death. Investigators arrested both Mendez's brother and Miller when they came to the hospital. When they arrested her, uh, she moved to the sister and smiled. Both families left reeling over the loss of the small boy with the smiling eyes and infectious laugh. Mendez says prior to his death, their family last saw Jamari in March. The family is now planning for his funeral. They've set up a GoFundMe page for expenses. All I want is justice for my, for my nephew. Both Mendez and Miller are due at this Victorville courthouse on May 5th. Well, they'll be facing charges of murder, assault on a child resulting in death, and torture. All right, let me go ahead and go to our next video. May have to do some volume adjustments because these volumes are really off for some reason. Arrested for allegedly killing their infant son, 27-year-old Ricardo Mendez and Antonita Miller were arrested after their one-year-old son was brought to Pomona Valley Hospital. He was pronounced dead upon arrival. Police were called after the injuries were determined to be the result of abuse. Detectives say the boy died before the couple drove to the Mendez family home in Pomona and a family member brought the baby to the hospital. I don't know how there weren't warning signs way before they got to this point. The fact that they were able to torture this child, murder this child, kill him, throw him in a tr trunk, throw blankets on top of him, take their other two kids, drive over to a family event, come up with a cockermamie ass story about where this baby boy was, then the, the dad turns around and tells them where the boy actually is in the trunk and then they stay in the house while the rest of the family runs out there to the trunk, takes the kid to the hospital and these two idiots just stay there. Everything about this, in my opinion, says not only are they deranged individuals, but I can almost imagine what they probably did to these other kids. The other two kids have probably suffered abuse as well. But there had to have been warning signs that these were terrible human beings. The family members had to have known something about these people to know that they are horrible human beings. There were red flags and yellow flags probably all over the damn place. They probably needed to have had child, uh, child services call to do an interview on them. Check their house out. Check the kids out. If somebody would have done a welfare check a lot sooner, maybe it would have been possible to save this baby boy. He could not speak for himself, nor could he defend himself against the tyranny of his own mother and father. And I got to tell you, man, that's just sad when you are born into this world and your advocates, the people that are supposed to love and protect you and make sure that you have an opportunity to grow up and become something great are the ones who fail you and the ones who take advantage of you and ultimately end your life. I see no reason for these people to ever have communication with their other two children ever again. That should be a law, especially when you do stuff like this. Those kids should never have to talk to their parents ever again in this life. They need life in prison 
And they, they don't need to be diagnosed. They don't need anything. Just get rid of them. Terrible people. That baby boy deserved better parents. But let me say this, man. Let me see if I can get his picture back up here real quick. One of my favorite pictures, even though I like that one a lot, my favorite picture of him is the one in green. Look at his smile. Look at that. How can you be mad at a smile like that? That is a welcoming smile. Big, beautiful black eyes. Beautiful baby. My favorite picture is this one right here. His eyes don't even look black there, but whatever. But innocent baby, Jamari Mendez, Young Prince, R.I.P. But we want to make sure that this story is shared. We want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to hear this story. We can all band together by doing something as simple as clicking the thumbs up, share this story, post it out on social media links. Make sure that everybody gets a chance to hear his story. We'll make sure and get justice in Barstow, California, okay? We need justice for all of our babies. All right, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Like, share, and subscribe, okay? Thank you.